Welcome to the Rugged Truth Podcast. I'm Dr. Brian Fergus, and I am so glad that you are joining us for this episode of the podcast. Thanks for clicking on our YouTube video or clicking on our audio podcast episode. I think you're going to be glad that you did. Uh, Maybe you clicked on one of our links because you're a regular Rugged Truth Podcast listener. If so, thank you so much for coming back. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Or maybe you clicked on this link because the topic grabbed you this time. Uh, Jesus calls his followers to turn the other cheek. And a lot of us have questions about that. And so I want to answer a real question that real people are asking about real life with God. And I want us to talk about this whole idea of turning the other cheek. If we're supposed to turn the other cheek, does that mean that we should let people treat us like garbage and just let it go, do nothing about it? Does it mean that we should let people abuse us and just take advantage of us while we just kind of, you know, sit back and let it happen? Are, are we allowed to defend ourselves? These are just some of the questions that, that this whole command to turn the other cheek raises. And what about injustice? Think about that for a second. If Martin Luther King Jr., who was a Baptist pastor, by the way, if Martin Luther King Jr. turned the other cheek, wouldn't that mean that black Americans would still be sitting like in the back of the bus? Wouldn't that be mean that uh, African Americans would have uh, less rights than the rest of us? The title of this episode of the Rugged Truth Podcast is Turn the Other Cheek. Are you serious? <laughs> and the question behind that title is really this. Is it realistic to turn the other cheek in this day and age? Or is that, is that command to turn the other cheek just completely outdated? and meant for a simpler, more rustic time. In an age of Karens, and you've probably heard that term, when when everybody gets so angry about the smallest of things and demands to see the manager, is it realistic to turn the other cheek? I got to tell you something. I feel bad for ladies who are actually named Karen, by the way. Uh, That term uh, got adopted in the media back in 2019 because a a lady named Karen in Australia was trying to pull down uh, an aboriginal flag and somebody caught her on video. And now it's become a term that just kind of characterizes uh, people who think they're entitled to make the rules in in all of this stuff. But but I really do feel bad. So if your name is Karen, I, I apologize. I want you to know I feel bad for you. But let's get back to our topic. Is turning the other cheek very realistic in this day and age? And let's let's start by trying to understand what Jesus is really calling us to do when he tells us to turn the other cheek. He tells us to do that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. And so I'm going to grab my Bible, and uh, if you're in a position where you can grab yours, this would be a good time to do it so that we can uh, look at these words together. In Matthew 5, 38, Jesus says this, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Now, you should know that Jesus is quoting an Old Testament passage there. It's actually a passage that's, that's mentioned about three different times in the Old Testament. One of those mentions is, of course, in the book of Leviticus. And this, this quote from the Old Testament that Jesus mentions uh, was a law that was originally designed to guide judges in a courtroom. But people started using this rule, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, to settle personal personal disputes. Originally, this eye for eye, tooth for tooth thing was a limiting law. It meant no more than an eye for an eye. 
no more than a tooth for a tooth. We've adopted this principle in American jurisprudence, the idea that the punishment has to fit the crime. If someone takes your eye, you can't take their head. That's, that's out of proportion to the damage of the crime. But people in Jesus' day, and even, I guess, maybe people in our day, are turn that kind of idea into a, a rule to follow when it comes to settling personal disputes. You backed over my trash can. That means I get to back over your trash can. You know, so they, they apply that courtroom principle The punishment must fit the crime to petty disputes. And Jesus clears that up for us with three illustrations in the verses that follow. But this is where it gets confusing. It's this next verse that confuses us a lot. Matthew chapter 5 verse 39 says, But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. Let's just stop there for a second. Jesus tells us, do not resist an evil person. Well, what kind of evil person? You mean someone like Adolf Hitler? We're not supposed to resist somebody who goes on a genocidal tirade across Europe? Or uh, we're not supposed to resist a guy like Osama bin Laden who wants to turn the entire planet into a terroristic state? What other kind of evil people are we not supposed to resist? The teacher who's intentionally bullying and intimidating my kid? I'm not supposed to resist that person, but just subject my child to that kind of of treatment? What exactly is Jesus getting at here? Because that verse creates a little bit of confusion. I mean, are we really supposed to to let that kind of stuff go? The Hitler, the Bin Laden, we just kind of let that go and ride with it? Jesus knew we would need clarification on uh, his teaching here. And so he does that. He tells us what kind of evil person that he's talking about in the next several verses. And we'll just kind of, the next few verses actually, and we'll just kind of deal with these evil people one at a time. He says, but I tell you, let's back up just a bit. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. Turn the other cheek. There it is. The evil person that Jesus is telling us to not resist is the kind of person who would slap you on the right cheek. Now think about this for a moment. Most of us are right-handed right? The vast majority of human beings on this planet are right-handed. And so to slap someone on the right cheek requires a backhanded slap, right? You understand what I'm saying? If someone's right cheek is, over, is, is, is maybe the backside of my hand here, if I slap them with my right hand on the right cheek, I've got to do it this way. It's a backhanded slap, This isn't a slap that's designed to do maximum damage to a person. A fist to the face does that. This kind of slap is a slap that's designed to insult somebody or humiliate them. And so the kind of person that we should not resist is the kind of person who would insult us or humiliate us, an annoying person. The evil Jesus is talking about here are those personal annoyances, those personal insults. And so that's one of the illustrations that he gives us to help us understand what kind of evil person we're not supposed to resist. He gives us another illustration here in the next verse. He says, and if anyone, this is verse 40 of Matthew 5, and if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. The kind of evil person that we're not supposed to resist is the kind of person who would sue you for your clothes. Now, clothes were harder to come by in Jesus' day than they are for us uh, in the U.S. I popped into Goodwill yesterday, bought a couple of shirts, walked out of there, paid six bucks. You know, (laughs) so it's not a huge issue. Uh, but, but what Jesus is saying here is, look, if someone's going to sue you for your shirt, just go ahead and give them your coat. In other words, if somebody is going to be so remarkably petty 
that they are going to sue you over your clothes and just give them your coat and your shirt. Move on with your life, Jesus is saying. You get to be you, and they still have to be the kind of person who takes someone to court over a shirt. How petty and pathetic is that? So this evil person that Jesus tells us to not resist is just kind of an annoying jerk. Not someone who's doing uh, serious damage to us and the people that we love. And then finally, the evil person that Jesus tells us not to resist is the kind of person who would require us to walk an extra mile. That's where he goes in verse 41. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. And and in this illustration, this is probably one that we don't understand in 21st century America, but Jesus' listeners certainly would have understood it. They were under Roman occupation. And uh, back then, in Palestine, Roman soldiers could conscript or require or force a civilian to carry their gear for a mile. In fact, that's why Rome invented mile markers along their roads, so that you would know how long a mile was, and that's all you had to, uh, that's all the further you had to carry a Roman soldier's gear. But Jesus says, okay, somebody forces you to carry their gear for a mile. That's, that's annoying. Maybe you had, you know, lunch plans or something like that, and, and now you're going to be late or you're going to miss it all together. But you know what? It's not that big. But you know what? Just go two miles. Go two miles. What's that going to cost you? An extra 30, 40 minutes of your life? When Jesus tells us not to resist an evil person in Matthew 5, 39, he, he's talking about the jerk who annoys us. He's not talking about Hitler. He's not talking about somebody who wants to kill us or injure the people we love. He's not talking about injustice even. You know, I am convinced that the civil rights leaders of the uh, 60s and 70s in America were right to stand up for the marginalized. Read the rest of your Bible, especially the Old Testament prophets, and you will see that they cry out against injustice. Injustice, in fact, was the last straw that caused God to send his people into exile from Israel into Babylon, modern-day Iraq. When Jesus tells us not to resist another per- an evil person, when he tells us to turn the other cheek. He's he's not talking about injustice. He's not talking about someone who's trying to injure or damage us. He's talking about annoyance. And he's just saying, you know what? Just let it go. It's not that big a deal. It hurts our pride, but Does it do lasting damage to us? My wife, Stacy, I've talked about her several times here on the Rugged Truth Podcast. She, it's so great, right, to be married to a believer because we both have the opportunity not to police one another, but to remind one another, right? In a marriage relationship, you get to help the other person knock off the sharp edges of their lives because you have to live with each other. You're interacting with each other. And, and Stacy is so great about reminding me to let things just go when people annoy me, when they slap me backhanded on the right cheek. That doesn't really happen. Jesus is using an illustration. That doesn't happen to me. Anyway, it might happen to somebody else. Or when they sue me for my shirt, you know, they wouldn't have to take me to court. I'd give them the shirt. Or uh, if they make me walk an extra mile, I'm like, hey, I'm going to be working out anyway. Why not (laughs) go the extra mile? But Stacy's so good about reminding me uh, to let it go when people annoy me. And, and, and here's what she says, and I want to share this with you because I think this is really great wisdom. So let's say somebody has annoyed me, and they haven't hurt me. 
they've just annoyed me, like these three illustrations Jesus shares with us here in the text of Scripture. And she sees me, you know, because I'm Scots-Irish and I get this temper kind of like I start to puff and she'll say, hey, Brian, hey, Brian, let it go. You get to be a better you and they still have to be them. And that does it. I get to be a better me, but they still have to be who they are. They still have to be the kind of evil person who would insult and humiliate with a backhanded slap. They still have to be the kind of person who is so petty that they would sue someone over their shirt. They still have to be the kind of petty person, annoying jerk who would require someone to walk an extra mile. Is turning the other cheek realistic in an age of Karens? Turn the other cheek. Are you serious? Jesus would say, yes, I'm serious. In this day and age, turning the other cheek is not just realistic. I think it's necessary to maintain our sanity (laughs) in a world filled with annoying people who are so entitled and so grasping for their place in this world. I'll tell you what my good friend Robbie Lashua uh, told me as I talked to him uh, several months ago about something I was dealing with in my personal life. Robbie Lashua works with Stand to Reason. He's fantastic, a great friend, um, and and, uh, just a, a wonderful brother in Christ. And as I was talking to him about my story and what I had gone through with this particular experience, um, I told him I was really upset and that uh, I was having a hard time sleeping and that I was super angry with people. And here's what he said. It's kind of along the same lines as what Stacy told me, but I think you'll see the additional value in it. Robbie told me this. Listen, Brian, don't let what they did to you turn you into them. Oh, it's powerful, isn't it? Don't let what they did to you, don't let what they do to you turn you into them. I think that would be a good thing for all of us to remember. You know, be annoyed, let it go, move on with your life. You see injustice, you stand up for the marginalized. You know why we do that? Because Jesus stood up for us. Amen? Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we thank you so much for standing up for us. But we also thank you for teaching us a better way to live rather than cling to every annoyance or insult or minor offense you've helped us understand it, just let it go. Through our time in conversation today, you've reminded us that the folks who do those kinds of things, they still have to be them. But we get an opportunity to obey you and be a better version of ourselves, the kind of people you designed us to be in the first place. And we're thankful for that, Jesus. We love you for that. Pray that you would help us turn the other cheek in an age of Karens. And we ask all of this in your name, Lord. Amen. Well, amen. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Rugged Truth Podcast. I hope it was helpful. I'm having a lot of fun uh, bringing these podcasts to you from my studio in central Illinois. It's a blast. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Please like uh, this video or our podcast. Uh, subscribe to our channels. That helps us expand our reach. Share these videos and podcasts with the people you love because they need this information as well. If you're an audio podcast listener, stick around for a few moments. I've got some bonus content for you after a very short break. To our YouTube viewers, I want to say this. God bless you. We'll see you very soon. 